So, um, I guess let's go ahead and get started. All right. Uh, my name is Corey Mullins, uh, as you can see by my title page here. Uh, there we go. So, I guess let's start with a little bit about me. Um, my kind of initial desire to like build and create started at an early age. Uh, my dad kind of uh, introduced me with like Legos and stuff. And I kind of saw like a sea of endless possibilities to really make anything. Um, but when I started to get into high school, those passions kind of fell more to the wayside. Um, just because, you know, things started to take up time, uh, new activities kind of popped up for me. Uh, I started swimming more, um, being a musician, playing trumpet really kind of took up a lot of my free time. And so I really couldn't um, focus a lot uh, to that creative side to me as much anymore. So um, during my time in high school, I was introduced to AutoCAD in my first intro to draft, or in my intro to drafting course. And what I really enjoyed about doing that kind of work was I really liked the accuracy of just seeing everything come together from other schematics. Um, and the, the thing about that course was it, they only really had an intro class for me in high school. So that was really my first time and my only time really being introduced to it. And it, it's kind of fell out of me for a while. Um, but then, you know, I graduated, I came to Barrie. And when I came here, I didn't really have any direction as to where I wanted to go in terms of a major. Um, I found math and science to be really, really interesting, but I didn't really know what I wanted to do with them. Uh, inevitably, I settled in on chemistry, um, but I kind of found my ceiling to hit around organic. So uh, around my senior year, I decided to make the big change from chem to creative tech. It was a big move, but I found I really enjoyed what a lot of my friends were doing in the course. Uh, one friend, one very close friend in particular, uh, Jake. And the thing was, was it, it definitely stuck with me. So, um, yeah, that's it's just a little bit about me there. Um, my theme is developing consumer-based products through digital design. And what I mean by digital design is I'm talking about various forms of CAD or computer-aided design, whether that's Fusion 360, Easy EDA, or Autodesk, or AutoCAD, rather. Um, yeah. So I wanted to start off with um, something I call the Bach Blueprint. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I started off in high school as a trumpet player. And what I really liked about the trumpet was it's, it has a very complex shape to it. You can get a lot of different notes and a lot of different pitches just with a couple movements of slides and valves. And it just, it was a really cool um, just thing, I thought. And so in Chris's, um, uh, fusion course, he presented us with a final project and I really wanted to challenge myself on it. There was a lot of um, very small pieces and components that I had to take into account. Um, I designed over 30 various components and what a component is, is it's a very, um, it's essentially a body, but it's given the ability to have motion with it. So what I did in fusion was after I created all these various components, I added joints, which is kind of a, an overall term for motion. Um, and so you can really kind of see just how a trumpet functions essentially, whether it's moving the various slides or the various valves. So yeah, um, all in all, it was, it was a really fun project actually. I, uh, I really enjoyed going through and using all the various tools that were at my disposal when it comes to Fusion 360. Uh, for my next project, I wanted to talk about my animated matrix that I developed in my um, intermediate design studio course. Um, 
this is my first time using Easy EDA to actually uh, manufacture a PCB, which is a really cool process to go through and think about how to, or think about how certain things had to be oriented on the board, how I wanted them to look. Um, I kind of stuck with a very simple design solely because this was my first time and I wanted to be able to really just make sure that it was, um, that it worked properly. But it was, uh, it was also uh, my first time ever doing through hole soldering or any sort of soldering really. And so that was kind of another reason as to why I wanted to stick with a, um, a more simple side of it. But all in all, it was a very, uh, it's a very interesting project. Um, one, another challenge that was given to us was we had to create three distinct animations using Arduino. Um, I really hadn't had a whole lot of work in Arduino outside of physical computing. And this one definitely challenged me in terms of thinking about the logic and how um, very like how one thing impacts another in terms of like when you press a button and you're changing very to various states. So this was a this is a fun project and it really it got me a lot more interested in using CAD or using other sorts of CAD to create. Um, for my third project, I wanted to talk about my camp stool that, and it's another project that I did in Fusion 360, but this one was, uh, this was our first time actually like sort of manufacturing this, I guess you could say. Um, we had this footprint which was an 11 by 11 inch, you know, kind of box. And inside of that, we got to create any design that we really wanted to. And so I wanted to kind of make something that was kind of easy to transport in terms of like having like a handle that you could um, kind of put your hand into. Uh, and I also wanted to incorporate like a drink hole, you know, so that way you could put, um, you know, any sort of bottled beverage that you want into it. Because like when I think of going, when I think of going and sitting around like a campfire, I think of, um, you know, having a, a Coke with friends or something like that. Um, and so it's, uh, it was just something that I thought would be kind of a nice addition just to make things easier when you're moving to and from uh, like the car to the campfire, if you're taking the stool from one place to another. Um, but in terms of the design of it, it I tried very much to make it um, butt ergonomic, I guess you could say, you know, more comfortable when you're sitting on it. So that way, um, you know, you, you can really enjoy the time that you're spending with your friends. Um, so yeah. The next thing that I wanted to talk about is my capstone project. Um, I called this project the Trackberry Scroll Ball, and I really I I wanted to set out and try to solve the problem of phone sizes and hand size. Um, I've kind of found that as phone sizes have gotten larger over the years, people with smaller hands need a better way to navigate a phone. Um, Essentially, um, you know, it's harder if you're holding your phone with one hand to try to get it to the top of your screen, to get it to various points around your phone. And so that's really what I wanted to try to solve was essentially that. Um, and so this project uh, was a lot of fun to work through. It, it, kind of started to incorporate a lot of the different CAD skills that I've been developing throughout my time as a CRT student. Um, the first one was creating a PCB for all of my electronics. Um, this process, I learned a couple of different things from it. Uh, one, make sure you orient your uh, components properly, <laughs> otherwise uh, you're going to be moving some wires around. But it was, uh, it was definitely, uh, sorry, lost my train of thought there. Um, it was a project that I, 
uh, really enjoyed working through in terms of um, how to position the button or the, um, the scroll ball. Um, you know, what made sense? Did putting the button on the top because that's where people's hands would want to go up make sense or would it putting it on the side? And so I asked various people um, around the lab what made sense. And this was kind of the design that we had settled on. Um, the next portion was creating an enclosure for this in uh, Fusion 360. Uh, these are my first kind of iterations. What I kind of found was that in uh, uh, Thingiverse, there's a plethora of cases that are available to you, but none of them were quite what I needed. Um, and then the ones that I found, I found that I couldn't really change them as easily in Fusion 360. I couldn't adapt them to be what I needed for my design. So I actually sat down and took the time to create a case for the phone that I was working with. Um, and so I started off with sort of this, um, the design that you normally see in a phone case where it sort of wraps around the phone a little bit, has a bit of a lip and just has like cutouts for various portions, whether it's the headphone jack, the charging, or even like the uh, volume or the power switch. Um, but one issue that I found with it was after I printed it and tried to put it on, it was too rigid. I couldn't actually get the phone to fit into it. So I went to more of this bumper style for the second case. Um, and again, it, it worked, but I couldn't quite get it to sit around the phone comfortably. Like I didn't think it would, or not I didn't think, I couldn't quite get the heights of them to want to sit snugly around it. So then I moved to this third iteration um, right here to essentially kind of be more of like you slide the phone into it and then you would put this piece onto the back that would hold the electronics for the PCB. Um, and the, the biggest issue that I found with this, the back portion, uh, adding the back portion on was uh, I just couldn't quite get work out how to fit that piece onto there while the phone was there too. It was just too snug in certain areas. And so I couldn't get both of them to come together nicely. So I inevitably ended up on this design of having the back piece already printed onto it um, just to make things easier. Because at the end of the day, that's how this would have worked anyway, was it would just be a part of the case. And so I figured, why not just have it all be one piece? And so I created two cutouts. Uh, one was for the scroll ball and the button portion, so that way your finger could, you know, get to them. And the other part was a hole at the bottom to actually plug the electronics in from the PCB to the phone. Um, and then this was my final product of it. Um, if I, I wanted to, I want to go back and refine just one little bit where that hole is sitting. I think it's a little too low where the push button's at, but all in all, I actually, it was a really kind of a fun iterative process to go through. Uh, Cause each time I just kept getting closer and closer to it. And it was just kind of a, a puzzle to figure out. It was a lot of fun. Um, so what's next uh, for me? Um, a Creative Technologies alumni, uh, Nathan Hirsch, actually reached out a few weeks back uh, looking for somebody to, uh, he wanted, he's developing a team for his company, Tequidation, um, and he wanted to bring in a senior uh, Creative Technologies major, a graduate Creative Technologies major. And um, what they kind of do is they work, um, they provide solutions for companies like QT, Racetrack, um, you know, these, they provide custom uh, solutions for them. Um, I haven't really gotten a chance to talk with them too much recently as COVID-19 has kind of stopped a lot of companies, you know, looking for hiring. Uh, I plan to reach out to him again here uh, in the near future just to kind of um, get the ball rolling again. I very much am, I'm very interested in working with this company. They have a lot of things that I think they would be interested in. Uh, some of the things that uh, Nathan 
said in his email was they were looking for people who are able to use CAD to design new products. Uh, they're able to perform basic soldering or board repairs. And so I just, I, I feel like this company would be a good fit for me uh, just because a lot of the skills that I've worked on throughout my time here as a creative tech major really, I think culminates and I think it would fit well for this uh, position. So, yeah. Um, any questions? All right. Thank you very much, Corey. Yeah, let's open it up to everyone for questions, please.